Hi, I'm uh, I'm Wen Dali from the University of Birmingham. I'm talking about the road condition assessment by using the point laser system, uh, point laser system. So uh, here is what I'm going to do is uh, first I give you an introduction that I will uh, show how how a laser sensor and the system looks like. Then I will uh, talk about the single processing for this uh, point laser data. And I, then I will say what our future work will focus on. So firstly, uh, if you look at this picture, you see uh, there are some uh, threads on the road that's very common on um, every day. You see there are threads. Those things will become very uh, dangerous if you don't do uh, anything on them. So uh, what we try to do is we try to uh, detect these threads on the road and uh, to report to the government so they can let some people to take care of this, uh, uh, to take this load. So uh, uh, we have built a vehicle which has seven sensors, that's over there, seven sensors in the front of the vehicle. And uh, there are, in this picture, there are five, only five, they are 90 degrees towards to the front. And there are two more in the side, that's on the outside of the vehicle, that's one, uh, 145 degree to the uh, ground. Then the resolution of the, this point laser is uh, 4.803 millimeters, so that's very, very small, and uh, it uh, gives a really, really good uh, resolution to detect uh, all those kind of threatens and uh, patterns. So uh, here I'm showing how this uh, uh, primary idea of how a point laser Point laser working. So there's a uh, the point laser transmit a laser beam towards the ground and measures the time of uh, time of life of the reflecting back to the uh, receiver. So uh, ideally, if we have a good real surface, it should uh, return a very uh, flat and smooth reflection back to the point laser. But if, if we have some threading like here, this will become a uh, it will be very and will not, it will become more stable and uh, the distance between the point laser to the ground will be very much different compared to the uh, ideal road surface. So if we can find out these different uh, differences between them, this we can, then we can decide uh, which part of the road is good and which part of the road is not good. So uh, here's the simple process part of the system. Uh, then we first will have uh, the Sensor data collection. This is done by a uh, 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 industry partner who uh, drive the car on the road in the UK, and they will collect the data and the pass to us. Then we uh, we uh, design all the uh, processing uh, in the MATLAB, and we have some like a pre-processing. We filter out some uh, uh, sensor errors because those kind of uh, those type of laser sensors they are really uh, sensitive. They can really easy to get some bad. Uh, measurement. Then we have uh, the local and the global road texture index. This is what we use to uh, as an index to uh, measure the road surface, the condition of the road, road surface. Then we convert this uh, uh, road texture RTI into the frequency, uh, and uh, then we uh, calculate the parameters. We calculate three parameters to classify the difference between the local and the global. This is to, uh, to justify uh, to the difference and uh, the local and the uh, global uh, roads uh, to find out the difference between them. So if the local and global is very, lots of different, we will say this is not good, and uh, otherwise it's good. Uh, I will turn this part later. Then finally, we will compare comparison this with the scanning laser. The scanning laser is, uh, 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 it gives you a 3D data. But the uh, point laser we use in our system only gives you 1D data. So uh, the advantage of using our point laser is, is it has a very low uh, low density in the data, so it uh, will not require a lot of the processing uh, power. So here I'll give you an example of the uh, data uh, collected from the point laser. So you see, this basically you will receive like uh, for each uh, for each. Uh, point laser will receive like a vector like this over the longitudinal uh, direction, and uh, this uh, uh, in terms of the transverse direction, this 
they are the location based on how you uh, locate uh, how you put your the point data in front uh, in, in all cases like the uh, uh, point swim meters between each one. So you will have a, a vector like uh, this for each from each point data. So uh, first we will say uh, how uh, we calculate the real picture index. This is quite uh, uh, straightforward. We calculate the, actually we calculate the root mean square of the uh, data among a certain areas. So this is uh, what we uh, use. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, just uh, because uh, for the point laser and the row, they are different uh, different height. Uh, because <laughs> the row is not uh, completely completely flat, uh, they are kind of uh, certain of curve. So the middle of the point laser will more close to the road surface, but the uh, point surface in on the two sides will be far, far away. So we don't want to have this to uh, to mess up with the uh, to uh, mess up our calculation. So we use the real texture. So basically, we calculate the root mean square. That will not affect by the the height of the uh, point laser to the road. So here I show you what's mean by the local and global uh, the road. For example, if uh, this is a uh, 100 meter of the road we uh, measure, and the green box over here is the uh, what we call the global, and the global is used as a reference, and uh, the red in the middle we call uh, this is called as the local. The local is the uh, area what we are interested in and we want to examination. So uh, the reason why we use uh, uh, the global uh, as the reference because. The global, uh, the the road texture are very different. For example, if you consider there are some uh, concrete and there are some other types of road texture. If we didn't consider of the road texture, it may be in this type of the road texture is not a flatting, but in a lot part of the fracture is a flatting. So this will be uh, made introduce a lot of the error to our system. So we use uh, this global area as a reference to uh, to justify this local area. Then uh, we calculate the RTI from both the local and global uh, area. We uh, we cannot compare them directly because the distance between the global and the local are different. So basically, the data length is different. So we calculate the, the histogram, uh, the 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 thing of the histogram. So if you, you see here, the local uh, is the blue one and the global is the red one. They are so it's very di uh, different shape in terms of the uh, his form. So this gives us the uh, uh, background how we to measure the how to uh, compare the difference between the local and the global. If the local is very good and it's very looks like the global, so then they will have very similar shapes like this. So uh, that then we can justify uh, depends on the shape of the this this form. Say uh, it is more like, looks like a good one or not a good one. So we use three parameters to calculate the difference between the local and the global uh, RTI based on the based on their uh, histogram value. And the first thing is the correlation coefficient. This is just uh, 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 it's calculated just a regular coefficient, a correlation coefficient. So uh, if you think there's a, a low of the, this value, it will be considered is not a good one. But if it shows a higher of a correlation coefficient become good ones, and also the mean difference, that's also the, to define, uh, identify the degree of the friendly one, uh, how, how difference of the peaks shifts uh, in terms of this uh, uh, distribution in the histogram. Then we talk also the fraction, uh, which is to uh, how, uh, if, the, if the local area actually is smoother than the global area, it will show the, the, the peak to the left, so, but, uh, uh, it cannot be seen on the, the correlation and the, uh, the, the difference. So we also introduced this uh, fraction to examine how uh, to, to, to make sure it is the worse, not the better. Uh, so here is the result. We calculate from the next 100 meters uh, data set for, uh, I showed you just before. So uh, the, the red one, the red line is calculated from the point data. And the blue line is calculated from the scan laser. So uh, in the uh, so uh, we know the point laser gives you just our vector data, and the scan laser gives you a three D uh, data. 
So the scan laser gives you very much everything about the surface, but it has <laughs> so, so high uh, data depth, so it's going to be very, it's need a very, very powerful computer to run it. Uh, but uh, uh, our point laser is only a vector, so it's much, much uh, low complexity. So you, if you see the, see the two, two, two performance between two uh, laser, you see, uh, although there are some, uh, the point laser obviously is slightly worse than the, uh, it's, it's worse than the scan laser, but it still shows the uh, bad, for example, at 50 meters, like here, it also, also shows some here, but there, but there are some errors, like, like in the in the description parameters calculated. But uh, the overall is, like we uh, we also test our other data set as well, they showed the uh, scan laser maybe uh, it's better than point laser, of course, but uh, if we have a, a really good algorithm on the point laser, it still gives you uh, the roughly ideas about, uh, for example, it gives you good, medium, and the bad to the uh, real surface. So here, our future work will include in the field trial and the data capture. Because uh, we currently, our data set is only like uh, 200 kilometers, oh, no, two kilometers. Uh, that's not quite enough for our test. And we are going to have more field trial will be uh, probably in the south of the England that will be uh, designed to like uh, 20 kilometers. So that's going to be much uh, more data. And uh, then we'll filter out uh, the other problem is the uh, vehicle movement. If you think a uh, vehicle move on the, on the road and the way it's acceleration and deceleration, the vehicle itself has the, vibra uh, has the dynamic vibration. So that will affect the the point laser measurement. So this is going to be one of the problem we are going to uh, to uh, to solve it in the future work. And we also try to use some machine learning methods, decision tree, support support vector machine to classify the real texture. Because we think the one we use at the local and the global, the idea of that one is still not the the real, the best way to solve it. Because the over one hundred meters, it could change of the real texture. So it need to be. Uh, improve this part. <laughs> and uh, thank you. You can uh, follow us on the civil engineer of Birmingham, University of Birmingham. And uh, also, the, we have thanks to the TIL and the highway service from the our uh, industry partners. Thank you very much. Thank you.